Hello, welcome back. My name is Erin. I'm Elena, and this video is our fall TBR. Finally! I'm not feeling so finally about it personally. I don't want to say goodbye to summer. I'm very much ready for fall. I do not like summer. I don't get it. It's hot. It's gross. Yeah, it's hot. No. <laughs> Halloween, the best holiday. Oh, whoa. Fall. Not even close. Best holiday? Come on. Halloween's one of... Okay, let's not get into this right now. <laughs> the, the video's already derailed. Yeah. <laughs> if you are like me and you are ready for some nice, crisp fall leaves, cool weather, hot drinks, all of that, I've got you covered. And even if you are a summer gal like myself, we can still appreciate some cozy fall reads. It is an iconic time for reading. I cannot deny that. This is our first time like doing a dedicated like fall these list. Bunch of fall books. We've got yeah. everything here. We have the cozy atmospheric fall reads. We've got some spooky, scary, suspenseful, thrillery, mystery types. And a couple more witchy ones. We did do a tier ranking of all the witchy books that we read last year. That was so fun. And it still stands. So please go check it out if you're looking for witchy books. You're bound to find something on this list that appeals to you. So let's get into it. Okay, I am going to start us off. We are going to go through the cozy slash atmospheric books first. Not all of these are cozy, but they're not all like super thrillery. They can just be like a nice fall yeah. atmosphere. For so, the vibes. Yeah. So the first one I have is The Warm Hands of Ghosts by Catherine Arden. I am super excited to read this. I have started her Winter Night trilogy and thought her writing was beautiful. And when she came out with this standalone book, I think last year, it really caught my attention. It's historical fiction with a good dose of paranormal uh, spooky vibes thrown in, like magical realism almost. But it is set during World War I which is not something that I typically choose to read. I'm not a historical fiction person, but this sounds good. It follows um, a brother and a sister who are on the front lines and ha are searching for each other. And they get mixed up with this like Aww. ghostly, devilly type character. Ooh. But it's supposed to be really spooky, not horror, just like eerie and very beautifully written, which would make sense for Catherine Arden. And I'm really excited to I've read seen it. this one everywhere. So yes, that is the first on my list. Okay, my first one is Keeper of Enchanted Rooms by Charlie N. Holmberg. This is a cozy fantasy about a haunted house that will not allow its owner to leave. It's set in Rhode Island in 1846, and our main character, his name, it's Merritt Fernsby. Isn't that a great, like, cozy name? It is. Merritt Fernsby. I feel like it would be a pain in the ass to read, but I'm assuming you just read the Merritt I mean, I'm sure it's just the, the Merritt yeah. part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Merritt is a writer, and he's been estranged from, from his family for many years, so he's shocked when he inherits this house on its own little island. But he's like, let's go, free house. I mean, sure. I'm, he probably didn't say it like that. <laughs> but that's how I would say it. <laughs> but then the house traps him inside and won't let him leave. <laughs> so Holda Larkin from, let me get this right, the Boston Institute for the Keeping of Enchanted Rooms, a.k.a. Bikes. Okay. <laughs> She arrives to try to free Merritt from the spell his house is under. Is it like a romance? Yeah, magical mm -hmm. house, romantic subplot, cozy vibes. This book has excellent reviews on Goodreads. I think I'm going to do it audiobook because I love cozy fantasy in audiobook. Yeah, for sure. I agree. Yeah. Okay, my next one is... Lena actually got this beautiful copy with the black splayed edges. The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. I mean, that cover is so gothic and cool. I love it. I know. So this is Lee Bardugo's historical fiction fantasy-esque standalone novel that she just came out with last year. Um, it's set in 16th century Madrid. And apparently Bardugo has said that this is her most romantic book yet. Really? Yes. That definitely spikes my interest. I know. I was intrigued. The main character, Lucia, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, is a servant girl in an impoverished Spanish noble household. So when it's revealed that she actually has a talent for little magic tricks, the noblewoman that she's a servant for 
sort of uses her to gain standing and ranking within the nobility in Madrid. And essentially it just throws her into this world of like this danger. High society. High society. And she has to sort of get her way through it and meets this like mysterious immortal familiar who I'm assuming she falls in love with. Ooh. I don't even know what that means. Yeah, isn't it familiar <laughs> like your your animal that friend you're, like, or something? Super bonded yeah. with. But but she has real magic, right? Like she has like, real magic. It's not I said okay. magic tricks, but I'm, it's just yeah. like just want to clarify. I forgot. They call it little miracles. Oh, little because miracles. Because I think the whole point is like they're trying to figure out God versus magic. Oh, whoa. Like a theology. Whole, yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, yeah, I'm really excited to read this. Yeah, I think I'll read that too. All right, my next fall read will be Sweet Bitter by Stephanie Dandler. This is a coming-of-age literary fiction novel set in New York in the fall. It's not necessarily cozy, I think, but New York in the fall? It's got the vibes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The book is supposedly more vibes than plot, so. I know this was made into a TV show. I know. I really have no interest in watching the TV show, to be honest. Oh, weird, because I kind of would rather really? watch the TV show. Yeah. Also, apparently some people hate this book because they think the dialogue comes off as pretentious, which gives me Sally Rooney vibes. Yeah, I was about to say, that sounds up our alley. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay. The book is about 22-year-old Tess, who is newly arrived in New York, and she decides she's just going to walk into restaurants until she gets hired at one, and she finally does. It's like a prestigious restaurant. She becomes a server there. Server drama ensues, and I believe there's a bit of like a love triangle that makes up the backbone of the plot, so to speak. But again, I think it's more vibes than plot. Yeah. Having worked in food service myself, I find this very appealing. If you've been a server, you know server drama is crazy. And as one Goodreads reviewer says, this is a story which acknowledges that a job in the service industry, implicitly any job, can be exactly as transformative and revelatory as something a thousand times more glamorous. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Okay, my next pick is The Spell Shop by Sarah Beth Durst. These sprayed edges are like my favorite color. I had to buy this just because it's like the most adorable cover. (laughs) Yes, I mean, yeah. I've literally seen this book everywhere in the past month. Me too. So I'm really ready to see what all the fuss is about. Yeah, like look at this little guy. There's a little cat with wings sitting on the steps here, like basking in the sun. I die. So this is kind of like a mix between romanticy, cottagecore, and cozy fantasy. Mm. What? I mean, that's everything. The little note that I wrote just says, a cozy mystery full of stolen spell books, unexpected friendships, sweet jams, and even sweeter love. Oh, apparently there's also a spider plant that is sentient. It's like her companion. I heard, first I just heard spider and I was like, ah! <laughs> I thought it was like kind of cool. Yeah. So I'm excited for this one. It's a little switch up from the typical like animal companion. Yeah. Although that winged cat better be in there. I'll let you know. <laughs> Okay, my next cozy one is How to Solve Your Own Murder by Kristen Perrin. Here it is, another one that I've seen everywhere. Yeah. So this is a cozy murder mystery. It begins in 1965 with the story of teenager Frances Adams. Frances spent her entire life trying to prevent her foretold murder. A psychic at a carnival foretells her murder, and then she spends her whole life trying not to get murdered, only to, you guessed it, get murdered 60 years later. That's literally my greatest fear. Like, I will never go to a psychic because I'm scared of something like this. That does sound pretty miserable. This sounds horrifying. Is this cozy? (laughs) Yeah, it's supposed to be cozy. Just kind of like a funny take on it. Cozy murder mystery. Because, okay, the story's not actually about her. It's about her great niece. She is determined to catch the killer of her wealthy and reclusive great aunt. Okay. So, like, she shows up. Francis has been murdered. Annie knows that Francis knew she was going to be murdered. So, Annie shows up Um, and is like, I'm going to solve this murder. Okay. But the closer she gets to the truth, the closer she gets to sharing her great aunt's terrible fate. Of being murdered. Of being murdered. How many times can we (laughs) say that? I just love a good whodunit mystery in the fall. It's supposed to be like Agatha Christie-esque. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it's a new release. It came out in late March. Perfect. Next on my list is Ava Reed's new novel, Lady Macbeth. Mm. 
I'm very excited by this and I'm not quite sure why because I felt kind of mediocre about a study in drowning but the one thing that I absolutely loved about that book is the atmosphere. Okay. Ava Reed set the stage so beautifully. She is like a master of creating like a dark gothic vibe. So I have a feeling she's going to hit it out of the park again with this and it seems perfect for the fall. It's essentially a retelling of Shakespeare's Macbeth. Um, told from the viewpoint of Lady Macbeth. It's Ooh. apparently quite witchy. I'm really excited. I bet it is witchy. Yeah. And like a little dark. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. It comes out on the 13th, which is like tomorrow. Oh, perfect. So I'm going to pick it up. I think I'm going to get a hard copy of it because I quite like the cover of it. Cool. Yeah. Next, I'm switching things up a little bit with The Dutch House by Anne Patchett. This is a historical fiction book. Apparently, at least part of it takes place on Thanksgiving. Okay. There's your fall. And it happens over the course of five decades, beginning at the end of World War II. We have two siblings at the center of family drama. There's like nostalgia and tragedy all mixed up here. So the titular Dutch house is a grand estate that's located in the suburbs of Philly. Mm -hmm. And a real estate mogul bought it for his wife like as a gift their new money. They just hit it big in real estate. And then his children inherit the house. So the story mainly follows his children. And I've heard that audiobook is the way to go for this because it's narrated by Tom Hanks. Yes. That seems cozy Promising. for sure. Yeah. Yep. And this is... This I is a like, classic. Yeah. This it's like, like the most popular Anne Patchett book. Is it? She's got a lot yeah. of it's got Very it's the most re, it's the most reviewed Anne Patchett really? book on Goodreads anyway. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. I haven't read Tom Lake her other big one. Yeah. But I think this is a good entry point. I've actually read a few Anne Patchett books um and I've never been as impressed as I feel like I should have like Bel Canto and stuff. I wasn't super oh, yeah, you into. Did read that. Um and I actually started this one on audio and can confirm that Tom Hanks is the way to go. He's fantastic. It did not capture my attention, but I do remember the descriptions literally of the Dutch house at the beginning were super vibey. Like I think it will be a good fall read and I have yeah. a feeling you might like it. I think I could like it too. And yeah. even if I DNF it, then at least I'll have something to add to my DNF graveyard in the reading journal. This is a very calculated choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I actually think I'll like it. Yeah, I think you will too. That's a good one. Okay, I have two more. The first is Dreadful by Caitlin Rosakis. I saw this displayed everywhere at Barnes the other day. Is that where you saw that it? That must be where I was, yeah. They were pushing this one hard. And to be fair, it looked very interesting. It says that it is for fans of T. Kingfisher and Travis Baldry. Is Ooh. that how you say his name? Yes, that okay. is how you say his name. And I, I think that's such a weird combo. That is a weird combo. One very cozy, one horror -y. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think it's like a farce on like horror novels kind of. But okay. still kind of spooky. Like satire almost, maybe? Yes. One review says, a sharp-witted high fantasy farce. Oh, that must be where I got that word. Featuring a killer moat squid, toxic masculinity, evil wizards, and a garlic festival all at once. What? Those are amazing <laughs> buzzwords. I know. I literally, that's all I've written down for this. It sounds freaking cool. See, this is just making my TBR twice as long. Well, we've got the whole season to read all these amazing books. True. <laughs> okay, and then my last cozy pick is The Honey Witch by Sydney J. Shields. Cute. A little keyhole moment. Yeah. I put this in my witchy, but go for it. Oh, that's fair. So this is an adorable queer witchy romance about Marigold Claude. What a witch name. Yeah. She's a young honey witch who is cursed to never find true love. Hmm. And Naughty Burke, a grumpy skeptic who doesn't believe in magic. And with names like that, I'm thinking gotta be a grumpy sunshine. For sure. Right? For sure. If not, I'm gonna feel lied to. I've actually heard that this is like for fans of A Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. Yes. I hadn't even realized that, but grumpy sunshine, yeah. Yeah. The generational love curse is such a staple in the witchy genre, you know? Yeah, for but sure. But I like the queer twist on it. And it's supposed to have warm cottage core vibes, so yes, sign me up. Yeah, I heard that the magic system in this is based off of bees and honey. Oh my Which god. freaking cool. Yeah. I mean, Honey Witch, that would make sense. Yeah, I kind of glossed over that part. <laughs> All right, moving on to the spooky, maybe scary, maybe just suspense, maybe thrillery. 
all those non cozy. Yeah. So the first one on my list is Starling House. Obviously, this blew up last year. It was a Reese's pick. I've had my eye on this. I actually have the audiobook version. Oh, do you? Yeah. I didn't realize that. So I think this is essentially about a haunted house. It was originally owned by a reclusive 19th century author who just disappeared or something. And our main character gets a job there and is trying to fix it up. And I guess the house rebels or they have to deal with the secrets of the house. And I think, is it also like a romance? Yeah, and I heard the romance is really good. Really? Yeah. Yeah, she like falls in love with the heir of the author who owns the house. That sounds right. Yeah. So I don't know. I've heard it's scary. I don't know about the romance. Like a haunted house romance. Yeah. I mean, I, I heard it's spooky. So we will see. I could see it being spooky. I mean, the cover looks spooky. It does, actually. There's a lot of birds, which kind of stresses me out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's giving wayward a little bit. <laughs> to be fair, that's what a but... starling is, isn't it? A oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, my next one, I think this is like more suspenseful than scary, but I don't know. I could be wrong. It is The God of the Woods by Liz Moore. This has been everywhere lately. I know. I don't even know that much about this book, but I think it's going to be a five-star read. Agreed. I just get that premonition looking at this bad boy. Yeah. So this is a slow-paced, character-driven mystery with strong autumn vibes and very good reviews. I'm talking a 4.35 average on Goodreads. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. That's like, that's pretty good. (laughs) Is it? It's pretty new though, right? Yes, it's a new release, which I do think, yeah, reviews tend to be skewed in the beginning. Yeah. But it's a good sign. Mm -hmm. This book is about the disappearance of two siblings 14 years apart at the same summer camp. Which, why would you send your second kid to the summer camp where your first kid disappeared? I think they own it. Oh, okay. (laughs) I wrote down, I'm hearing words like multi-layered mystery, multi-dimensional characters, multi-faceted themes. A lot of multi stuff going on in here. It's a very deep book. There's a lot of layers. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And that's all I need to know. I'm choosing to go into this a little bit blind because I think the mystery will be more compelling to me that way. So yeah, I'll probably read this really soon. Yeah, I think I'm going to pick that one up too. Okay, next I have A Botanical Daughter by Noah Medlock. I have had my eye on this for a while because the cover is just insane. It's so cool. This is like a queer horror that revolves around two gentlemen in Victorian London who are in love and they sort of hide or like have their relationship in like an, a secret garden type yeah. thing. Isn't that right? Yeah. Um, and they come across or one of them discovers a plant that is super intelligent and they decide to basically do this Frankenstein experiment to create a botanical daughter, a botanical daughter. <laughs> Horror ensues. Next, I have The Midnight Feast by Lucy Foley. Did you read her other books or the guest list? Oh, what? She wrote the guest list? I did read the guest list and I didn't realize that it was Lucy Foley. I thought I had never read a Lucy Foley. I read the guest list uh, like maybe four years ago. I I thought it was okay. I really liked it. I have high hopes for this one. Interesting. That sort of like changes my perspective going into this a little bit. But I do, I do have high hopes. Yeah, I do think you know I could like this. I famously don't like thrillers. I keep trying though. Anyway, The Midnight Feast. It's set during the summer solstice, but it's always described as having really moody witchy vibes yeah this book is about the grand opening of the manor a woodland luxury resort owned and managed by a woman named francesca i think francesca is the main character the grand opening attracts a bunch of wealthy guests but lies secrets and murder derails the party so lucy foley is a very popular author and this is described as a super twisty psychological thriller which sounds so good. I am yeah. here for the twist. We'll see. We'll it's see. a new book. I'll let you know. <laughs> Next on my list is T. Kingfisher's A Sorceress Comes to Call. Mm. You will see that I got this from the library and was stoked. That's such a good library find. There was a lot of good stuff at the library this past week. So this is apparently a retelling of Brother Grimm's fairy tale, The Goose Girl. Oh my God. <laughs> Goose Girl! (laughs) Which famously is a question that you've been trying to answer for a few weeks now. What is a goose girl? I'm supposed to read Thorn, which is about a girl that, a princess that decides to be a goose girl. I still don't know. I still don't really know what that means. (laughs) 
I have determined it's not a girl that turns into a goose. No. To be honest, I still couldn't really figure out what the fairy tale was about after reading what this book is about. This one seems to be about a girl named Cordelia, whose mother is an evil sorceress. Classic. And she, Cordelia, realizes that she doesn't have to be beholden to her evil mother and has some agency in her life. So it's about her and also about a spinster named Hester, who is desperately trying to wretch her brother away from the evil sorceress oh. who is trying to ensnare him. So it's about both of these women, I guess, trying to take down the evil sorceress. And I heard it gets pretty gnarly when the sorceress starts doing all of her magic. Ooh, okay. So I'm excited. I've never read a T. Kingfisher novel, and I want to. So let's yeah. do it. I've heard good things, and this is the new release, right? It is. Yep. Love it. Maybe I'll be able to tell you what a goose girl is by the end. Yeah, I should read Thorn at the same you time. You should. And then yeah. what if we come back with two different definitions? <laughs> we probably will. <laughs> okay, next I have... A straight up scary one, a classic scary book. It is Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. Yes, so this is a classic horror published in the 60s about a spooky circus that arrives the week before Halloween. You have a type, man. You love all these books about like circuses that just show I up. I do. <laughs> and you know what? I don't think I've ever been to the circus. So maybe that's the issue. I'm like romanticizing circuses. So two 13 year old boys, they're boy BFFs. They sneak out of their bedrooms at night to witness the arrival of this scary circus and, you know, nightmares, scary stuff, horror happens. I believe this is at least partially a coming of age story. Um, and personally, I am a sucker for boy BFFs. Like, boy BFFs, they're so cute, you know? <laughs> they probably, like, kill each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Bradbury is a literary canon staple, you know? And I've heard the writing, the prose in this is supposed to be really good, kind of, like, stilted and atmospheric dialogue mm. and it's supposed to be genuinely scary give you nightmares scary really i don't think i can do it then but is it because it's like class it's I, I don't know i don't know i don't know <laughs> you literally think because it was written in the 60s that it can't actually be scary i guess that's now. dumb isn't it that's no probably more i would probably scary. say the same oh you think yeah but i think you'll probably be humbled We'll As find I out. would be. Yeah. I'll report back. Okay. Okay. The last on my list for horror is Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Canas. I read The Hacienda last year and found it really terrifying, but in a way that I could actually stomach because I am not good with scary movies and horror. And this was like on the cusp for me, but I got through it and really enjoyed a lot of aspects of it. So I'm excited to check out her vampire novel. The thing that I also really love about this author is the setting of the story. Um, I think this one is set in the 1840s uh, on the border between Texas and Mexico. Ooh. And I think a war is starting because a lot of the Texans are crossing into the Mexican farmlands and there are vampires that are sucking everybody's blood at night just to make matters worse. But I also think that it's a romance. She does tend to put romance into her stories and this one is no exception. So I'm excited to check it out. Yeah, I think this could be really good. I've had my eye on this for a good year. Okay, and the last one that fits this category for me sort of is If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. I don't know if this is scary per se, but it is a murder mystery. I think it's suspenseful. It's definitely not cozy. Yeah. So I'm putting it here. I feel like I've heard very mixed reviews on this. Yeah. But it's on every fall TBR list. So I need to know. Everyone's read it. Everybody has read it. I feel like we're missing out on something. Yeah. So somebody should read it. Plus a common complaint that I hear is that the characters are constantly quoting Shakespeare, you know? Yes, which sounds like something you would enjoy. Yeah, I really like Shakespeare. I mean, I'm not an expert or anything, but I'm a fan, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think I could like that aspect of this book that seems to annoy others. This book is about a troop of actors in their final year at an elite Shakespearean academy. Oliver Marks just served 10 years in prison for the murder of one of his friends. And when he gets out, a detective approaches him and is like, hey, I need to know the real story. Please tell me 
what really went down. And then the story unravels kind of time jump style in five acts, just like a Shakespeare play. Okay. I don't know. Sounds good to me. And I guess we get to find out what happened with the murder. Isn't this kind of like a dark academia book too? Super dark academia. The cover is like a skull on a stack of books. Right. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Now moving on to our final category, witchy books. I will start us off with Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. I've also seen this book everywhere lately. So this book revolves around a group of childhood friends who are now adults who are all part of a secret government coven. Ooh, okay. Yes. When an ancient prophecy threatens their world, it pushes them to confront their pasts and make some tough choices. Apparently this is like very feminist and sisterhood. I mean, I think all of these witchy books tend to be, but also has a decent uh, queer representation. Oh, cool. Yeah. So Reminds me of Venko. I, you know what? I need to put Venko on my list. I love it. I actually do want to read that this year, but that aside, yeah, I've heard mixed reviews to be perfectly honest, but the premise of a secret coven established by Queen Elizabeth, I mean, you kind of sold me right there. Yes. So I'm excited for this one. I'm excited for all of them, apparently. Yeah, you know. Yeah. We're excited. Both of my witchy reads are romances and I should have put the honey witch here, but whatever. Okay. So (laughs) my next one is The Kiss Curse by Aaron Sterling. I have the exact somewhere. It's at my house. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is the sequel to The X-Hex, which I read last year, totally loved it. The X-Hex is about a young witch who accidentally puts a curse, a hex, if you will, on her ex after she finds out he's secretly betrothed, which fair enough, girl, you know, but the curse ends up affecting her entire town as well. So they have to reconnect in order to try to lift the curse before it destroys the town that they both love. Very cute. Yep. So this sequel is about her BFF slash cousin. So this character is in the X-Hex, but now she has her own story. And I love when authors do that. Also, her love interest is the big brother of the love interest from the X-Hex. Wow. Which I think is like a little little incestuous. incestuous. Yeah. (laughs) They always like take it one step too far. You You don't need to know all of the characters. They don't all have to be connected. I get there's no like crossing DNA, but I don't know. It's a little weird. There are other people in the world. Right. (laughs) But whatever. So the main characters, Gwyn and Wells, and Gwyn runs this kind of kitschy magic shop. They sort of pretend that it's not real magic, but Mm. but it is. She's actually a real witch. Classic. She has this sort of touristy witchy shop in town. And then Wells opens a rival shop right across from hers so there's like a rivalry situation this is literally like you've got mail oh it is you uh, it, yes i totally which is a good fall yeah ish vibe okay yeah. interesting um but i will say there's like a little extra conflict going on here because there's like a rival coven coming through town that's like messing with gwyn's magic or something okay yeah and i just loved the x hex so much yeah so I think I'll probably love this. Okay, next on my witchy list is Slewfoot. Ooh, yeah. A Tale of Bewitchery by Brom. Have you heard of this? Yeah, I saw Katie is reading. Oh, Read did it. she? Okay, it's, I've seen it around a lot and I really liked the cover. It's set in colonial New England and follows a recent wi- widow named Abitha who is fighting to maintain control of, I think, like her farm or her freedom or essentially just trying to live as a single woman in a patriarchal Puritan colonial world. Fair enough. It sounds like she befriends a devil in the woods and witchy things ensue. Yeah, I think this is like a spooky (laughs) witchy. Yeah, I think it's like a horror-y witchy book. But it looks really cool. And you gotta have one classic like New England witch trials type book in there, right? Yes. Yeah. I think there are cool illustrations that go along there with this are. too. I saw that. Like, I might have to get like the scary. actual physical copy. It is on Kindle Unlimited, which is the reason I have not bought a copy. Mm. But I don't think the, tr- the illustrations will translate. Yeah, probably wouldn't be as good. I just read the Graveyard book and it has illustrations throughout it as well. And it just, it did not hit on Kindle. Okay. And my last one is Payback's a Witch. <laughs> By Lana Harper. (laughs) You gotta love that. Like, so this also kind of has X-Hex vibes to me, but with a queer romance. Okay. 
I've never heard of this. It looks funny to me. You'd probably recognize the t- the cover when you when you put it up here. You'll see it. Okay. Main character Emmy Harlow is pulled back to her hometown because of a family tradition involving a spell casting tournament. I think she doesn't want to be there, but she has to be there sort of deal. And on her first night in town, she runs into Talia, another witch who is like talented in the dark arts or whatever. And she has just gone through a bad breakup with this dude, Gareth. Ugh. Gareth was cheating on her with another woman named Lyndon. And then Lyndon, Emmy, and Talia team up to exact revenge, payback's a witch, oh. on Gareth. And Emmy falls in love, I think, with I think with Talia. So it's like I think. Joe Tucker or John Tucker must die. Yeah, yeah. But witchy. I love it. And I they know. fall in love? I think so, yeah. Okay, cool. That sounds cool. I know. It sounds fun and funny. Last on my list, and I think last for the day. Is that right? Okay. Wrapping it's this up. The Black Bird Oracle by Deborah Harkness. This is the fifth in the Discovery of Witches series. Again, you will notice that I picked this bad boy up at the library, the which library is, is shocking. It. This just, just came, came out. out. And this is a wildly popular series. It was also made into a TV show starring Teresa Palmer and Matthew Good, which was also phenomenal. This series follows a witch, Diana, who works either works or studies at Oxford. I can't remember. And she meets a vampire. They fall in love and have a forbidden romance. And the series essentially revolves around them trying to be together. It's amazing. I absolutely love it. It's been a very long time since I read the rest of this series, but I, I'm really excited to pick this up. This follows Diana and Matthew after uh, like 10 years after the events of the previous novel. I don't want to give too much away, actually, so yeah. I won't say anymore. Yeah, it's hard to, to give a synopsis for a book that's like the last in a series. Literally like the fifth in yeah. a series. But all that to say, I'm super stoked to have this. It's a bit of a chonky read for me. But um, I might have to do it pretty quickly because I'm just really excited to get back in this world. Yeah, it's such a quintessential witchy world. Good score. All right, so I feel like that was a pretty comprehensive fall TBR. Yeah, that wraps up a very nice list of fall books for you. Let us know if you've already read any of these books. Uh, You know, do you think we're going to like them? Should we skip them? Now is the time to tell us. Yes, we will be getting started on these like pretty much immediately. Yeah. So then we can follow up with some very solid actual recommendations for the fall. Yeah. Expect multiple videos with fall reading recs from us. If you like this video, please like this video. Subscribe if you are new. And until our next video, we will see you later. See you soon. Mm-hmm.